Throughout the Second World War, there were many executions that took place. One of the most shocking sights was when Benito Mussolini, the former dictator of fascist Italy, was brought dead into a square in Milan. Hours before he had been dragged to the side of a road and he was executed by partisan fighters, being sprayed by bullets from a machine gun. Mussolini was very close with Adolf Hitler, the Nazi dictator, and he would bail him out following his capture as Mussolini was arrested and fell into the hands of his enemies. But during World War II, Mussolini was kicked out of power and he was voted out of government by his own party and by the Grand Council of Fascism. One of those people that rallied against Mussolini was his own son-in-law, who did turn against him and was motivated by power. But Count Galeazzo Sciano would later himself be executed as he was brought to a firing range and was to be shot in the back out of shame. But what is the story of the execution of Mussolini's son-in-law? Join us today as we look at this, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Gian Galeazzo Sciano was born in 1903 in Livorno, and he was the son of a First World War veteran and an admiral. His father was senior in the Italian Navy, and was given the title of a count by the King of Italy. His father, though, was a founding member of the Fascist Party, and he was also in the Merchant Navy. His father, though, was a man who had a rather expensive lifestyle, and Galeazzo Sciano would grow up in a high-profile family, where there was lots of celebrity and wealth. His father was there, with his son, during Mussolini's fascist march on Rome in 1922, and they were involved in the demonstrations. The black shirts would conquer many parts of Italy, and Mussolini then seized power, after he was made Prime Minister. But Galeazzo then went on to university and he studied law, and he looked towards a career in politics. But at the age of 27 he married Edda Mussolini, the daughter of the Italian dictator. With this, Ciano would enter the family of the most powerful man across Italy, and he then benefited politically from this union, and he would also have great power. But their relationship led to three children being born, and Ciano was a man who would have a number of affairs and mistresses whilst married to Mussolini's daughter. He would then work as a diplomat and travel to Asia and Shanghai, and Edda Mussolini went with him, and it's believed on one of these trips she slept with another man, a Chinese warlord. Their marriage was not a good one, but when Sciano came back to Italy in 1935, he would become a bigger part of his father's political party and government, and was named the Minister of Press and Propaganda. But Sciano then turned to the military, and he would be involved in the Italian invasion of Ethiopia, and he served as a bomber commander. He was rewarded for his service and was seen as a war hero, but to the people of Italy, he had gained their respect, and he was named the Foreign Minister. But he did have a dark side, and he was linked to the murder of two brothers, who were anti-fascists, and these were killed in a French town. He was slowly becoming the second most powerful person in Italy behind his father-in-law, and before the Second World War broke out, there were talks about Ciano becoming Mussolini's successor. Mussolini was slowly getting his son-in-law into this position, but Ciano was realistic, and he was not blinded by Mussolini. He would see the problems with the Italian military and the armed forces, and he knew the Italians were not ready for an all-out war and conflict. He knew that if the Second World War broke out, and Italy got involved, that they would be destroyed, and when Mussolini declared war on France and supported the Nazis in public, Ciano said, I am sad, I am very sad. The adventure begins, but may God help Italy. When the Germans invaded Poland, Ciano was working as a foreign minister, and the Italians were not told about the invasion, and he believed that Hitler should have consulted him and Mussolini about this, and he said that the countries must not have been such close allies. But Ciano himself began to doubt the Second World War effort, and he began to withdraw his support for the Nazis and the Italians, and he was starting to believe in withdrawing the Italians from the conflict altogether, and he believed that this would be the best thing. Ciano even started to sabotage the war effort, and he would leak information to the Belgians about the impending invasion of their country. He would also say the Italian invasion of Greece was poorly executed, and that the invasions they were involved in were terrible failures, and resulted in unnecessary loss of lives. Ciano would in private make a number of comments about his father-in-law Mussolini, and these were later reported back to him, and Ciano was told to watch his words, and he was also found guilty of treason against Mussolini for doing this. But he did not listen, and at one meeting Ciano was excluded from a consultation between Mussolini and Franco, which frustrated him massively. Ciano knew that as a foreign minister, he should have been involved in these meetings with heads of foreign states, 
but more problems existed between Shano and Mussolini. He did not seem to realise that his job as foreign minister was more of a favour Mussolini gave following the marriage of Ciano to his daughter. But after more defeats for the Axis and for the Italians, Ciano then began to believe that Italy did not need to be involved in the Second World War. There were more criticisms he had about the fascist dictator, and in secret Ciano would lobby other prominent politicians to try and form a coalition that would support the withdrawal of Italy from the conflict. But when these talks were reported to Mussolini, Ciano lost his job as foreign minister, and the rest of the cabinet were also fired and sacked. But Ciano was then given a job with the Pope, and Mussolini kept an eye on him. But on the 14th of July 1943, the fascist Grand Council gathered to meet. This was the first gathering that had occurred since the Second World War had broken out, and this was gathered due to the Allied invasion of Sicily. In this meeting, Mussolini told that the Germans were going to evacuate, and one of his most loyal friends turned against him. Following this, a motion was then made to the king to ask Mussolini for power and leadership. This was accepted, as 19 voted for and 8 voted against, and Ciano would vote against his father-in-law, and following this, Mussolini was then sacked and he was arrested. He was watched closely for two months and was moved to different residences for his safety and to stop the Germans from freeing him. The Germans would eventually free Mussolini in the Grand Sasso raid and he was then appointed the head of the Nazi puppet state in the north of the country. But the new government following his sacking was established and Ciano was excluded from this because of his links to Mussolini. He then went on the run with his wife and their three children and they headed towards Nazi Germany and feared for their lives. Ciano was worried Mussolini would place him on trial, and this is exactly what happened, and he accused his son-in-law of treason following his capture by the Germans, who then handed him over to the fascists. The trial was held in Verona, and Edda Mussolini would plead with her father to spare her husband, Galeazzo Ciano. But Mussolini would not get involved in this, and Ciano knew he was about to be sentenced to death. He got his affairs in order, and wrote a letter to the king, and one to Winston Churchill, before he then organised his diaries for post-war publication. Edda Mussolini continued to try and get her husband freed, and she even tried to hatch an escape plan for him. She was going to publish her husband's revealing diaries, but it was clear Ciano would be executed. Galeazzo Ciano was found guilty of treason and was sentenced to death. He was still considered a military hero, and because of this the execution he would face was a firing squad. But on the 11th of January 1944, Ciano was taken out of Verona and he was to be executed. He was taken outside the walls of the town and there was a clearing against an embankment where a firing squad was being gathered. There were many others who were executed that day, including others who voted against Mussolini, and it was a cold January morning. The execution squad was summoned and opposite them were a number of wooden chairs and stools for the men to be tied and shot on. Ciano was placed on the chair and he was then tied to it to make sure he didn't flee. He was tied tightly, and then the executioners were readied. But the men who shot Ciano were not the most skilled. He was awaiting his death, and he was facing away from the executioners, which was considered an act of humiliation. But when the firing squad readied their rifles, Ciano then turned around and jumped forward with the executioners, then shooting him in the chest rather than in his back. He was the only one executed in this way, and the executioners that day did their jobs poorly. A number of the condemned were not killed to begin with by their wounds, and many had to be given a coup de grace gunshot to the head. Galeazzo Ciano was a man who was a son-in-law of Mussolini, and he was a rather senior man inside of the fascist government through marrying Mussolini's daughter. But he would speak out against him, and because of this Mussolini became his enemy, and he would later order the execution of his own son-in-law. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.